Okay, uh, good evening everybody. I'd like to call to order the Farmington Board of Education uh, meeting for Monday, March 18th, 2019. If we can please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, next item on the agenda, 5B, annual audit report dated June 2018. I invite Jessica. all those out there. Very exciting documents. I don't want any of you to miss okay. anything. Excellent. Oh, okay. Good one for Kim, too. Thank you. Sorry, Sorry Kim, you don't get one. <laughs> Sure she's all broken up. I'll share. No, she doesn't want. <laughs> right, so I, I handed out um, kind of a quick presentation just to stay on track and try to focus on the things that I thought you guys were going to be interested in. Um, my name is Jessica Aniscoff. I'm a manager at Bloom Shapiro, and this is my first year for on the town of Farmington. I think Leslie has come and done this presentation several times, and she tried to give me directions into this room. Didn't go so well, but <laughs> here. Um, so just to flip to the first page in the presentation, I'm gonna go over the engagement scope and reporting, some financial highlights, and then the required auditor's communications. If you guys have any questions while I'm going through it, feel free to jump in. If I'm missing something that you'd like to hear about, well, I can certainly go through something else. So the audit was performed under three standards. The auditing standards generally accepted in the United States, the standards applicable to financial audits contained in the government auditing standards, and then uniform guidance, which was formerly the federal single audit and the Connecticut state single audit. So under the generally accepted auditing standards, which is over your financial statements, which is the biggest thing that you received, um, the town received an unmodified audit opinion. What that is is a clean audit opinion. Um, based on our procedures, there was no material misstatements noted during the audit. So you had a clean opinion over the financial statements. Under the government auditing standards, we have what's called commonly referred to as a yellow book letter. So we do look at some internal controls over the financial statements and under over the programs that we test for the federal and state single audit and there were no material weaknesses or significant deficiencies for internal controls. Um, also for compliance, which is the federal and the state single audit, which I'll go into in a little bit later, um, we had no instances of non-compliance, and that's really a grant testing. So the first thing I wanted to talk about is the federal single audit, which is one of the smaller um, audits that you have here. So we're required to test um, based on a risk assessment of the, the grants you receive. Um, we have to test the expenditures for um, different grants 
depending on, like I said, the risk assessment. If we haven't tested it in three years and it's over 750,000, we have to test it. Um, so for 2018, <coughs> the grant that we tested was the special education cluster, which was about 744,000. And of the requirements that the federal government gives us to test for the grant, how you used it, um, the cash management of it, and reporting that you are required to file, there were no findings over that grant with the compliance, and that is a Board of Education grant, so I wanted to point that out because you might be interested in that. Um, similarly to the federal single audit on the state side, uh, we have to do the same thing. We do a risk assessment of the expenditures for the grants, and um, we tested the clean water grant, which is more on the town side, the open choice, which is on the school side, and we actually tested a, another grant, um, open space, but that was on the town side. So of the compliance requirements for those grants, again, as I mentioned before, there were no compliance findings, so we had no findings on the requirements that we had to test for those grants. Which is kind of what is summarized on the next slide, so I'm gonna just skip that one. As far as the general fund goes, um, if you wanted to follow along, it's page 15. I kind of put some page numbers in here. You don't have to flip through it, but just so that you can follow where I am. Um, so the general fund total fund balance increased about 2.2 million for the fiscal year. The, I'm just gonna quickly go through the, the major funds of the town. So the capital project fund is the other major fund and the fund balance increased 20.8 million which was primarily due to um, clean water fund notes that were issued. And then the non-majors, which is a bunch of the smaller funds combined into one column in the financials, um, the fund balance increased 1.6 million. So if you look on the bottom of page 15, you can kind of see the summary between the revenues and expenditures for each of those funds to see where those increases are coming from. Um, more specifically, looking at the budget, which is on page 62. So the fund balance that I was just talking about was on the gap basis. Um, most of you are probably more used to the budgetary basis, so I'm gonna kind of skip to that, um, which is page 62. So as far as the budgetary basis, um, the original budget for the town was 102747135 and the actual revenues for the town this year were 104, 242, 408, which was a positive of about 1.5 million. Total expenditures were, the original budget was also 102, 747, 135, that didn't change, and the actual expenditures were 101, 861, 059, which again was a positive variance for the town of 886,000. So additional revenue came in and expenditures were below budget. So that put a positive overall budget of about 2.4 million. Specifically to the Board of Education, um, on page 62, the original budget of the Board of Education was 63,976,551 and it didn't change to the final budget and the actual was 63,969,942, which was a positive um, 6,609. So the Board of Ed was under their budget by about $6,600. Um, just to mention a few of the smaller funds of the town, or I'm sorry, of the Board of Education that you control, if you flip to page 82. Um, you have the cafeteria fund and the special projects education fund. So at the end of the, at 630, 2018, um, the cafeteria fund had an increase in fund balance of 22,960. That means the, the revenues of 1.5 million exceeded the expenditures of 1.478, which gave it a positive position at year end and the Special Projects Education Fund. Um, it was, it had a negative position at the end of the year. The 3.7 million in revenues, or 3.754 in revenues 
were less than the expenditures of 3791. So there was about a $36,000 increase in the deficit in that fund. Um, so two of the hot topics that I don't like to talk about, but the state is talking about, so I'm gonna bring it to your attention. The teacher's pension liability and the teacher's OPEB liability. Um, I know the state keeps tossing around whether the towns are going to have to put in for a portion of this or what part of it they may want the towns to fund. Um, a few years ago when we came to these meetings, we would tell you these numbers and say, the town is not responsible for any of it. I'm not sure I wanna say that anymore because obviously that's talks at the state and so that may come down. But just so you guys are aware of what they're talking about, the net pension liability associated with the teachers for the town of Farmington is um, 106 million. And then the OPEB liability, which is the post-employment benefits, is 27 million. So whether somewhere down the road, the town has to pay a portion of this or, or all of it or not is yet to be seen, but these are the numbers that, um, for the town of Farmington that keep coming up. And again, the page numbers are on there if you guys want to read any more about the state's plan and, and that kind of stuff. So just to go through the required auditor's communication, within the financial statements, there are some significant estimates. Um, we review the estimates to make sure there's no management bias and to make sure that they seem reasonable. Um, some of the estimates are the capital assets, the useful lives, which are used to calculate the depreciation on capital assets, um, the allowance for uncollectible receivables, the net pension and OPEB liabilities, which are um, really generated by the town's actuaries. Uh, but we review what the actuary sends to make sure things seem reasonable um, and the estimates of the claims liability. We had no difficulties in performing the audit. We had no corrected or uncorrected misstatements. Um, we had no disagreements with management. Management is required to sign a representation letter, which basically says they answered us honestly. They gave us access to all documents that we requested. Um, to our knowledge, management didn't consult with any other um, auditors and, or accountants. That would be, um, we call it kind of opinion shopping, like they didn't like what we said, so they went out and asked somebody else their opinion. Um, to our knowledge, that didn't happen. And um, we had a, a good relationship this year working with the town board of ed. Um, so I don't think that we have any concerns there. So did I miss anything that you guys are used to hearing about or? No, no, it's, uh, there, it's a lot to digest. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I guess you could ask, thing. <laughs> would you say much like they start the State of the Union address, the State of the Union is good? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fair way to summarize it. <laughs> but uh, thank you, Jessica. Is there any questions for Jessica? Just one real quick quite a question of a clarification. And based on, um, what page was it on? Sorry. Uh, there was a 2.381 million dollar positive budgetary variance at, and I'm guessing that's the end of fiscal year 1718 right yes yes no. everything it's, I present tonight as, as of okay. 63018 um, all right and uh, that's I, that's just what I understood that thank yep. you okay yeah although you're almost done with this year we're mm -hmm. still no I know you're here but <laughs> that's how it works right yeah okay yeah. Thanks, Liz. I'm just, just for clarification because there are students here from law and government classes so the Board of Education had a surplus of $6,600. And just so they know, <coughs> the Board of Education can't keep that money, the 6600 It goes back to the town. Correct? Right, it goes back right. to the general fund. So it yeah. goes back to the general fund of the town. The town had a surplus of $2.4 million. And that surplus of $2.4 million goes to, what's called the, uh, goes to what's called the fund balance. Mm -hmm. And that's just what people call the rainy day fund in layman's right. terms right yep okay um so just to explain it to people yep, yep. right um the board of education is not allowed to just carry money around in a rainy day fund at the end of a fiscal year we have to zero out 
Right, so the Board of Ed is just one line item in the town's budget. Right. So whether you're positive or hopefully not negative, but positive, right. anything well. that is positive goes back to the town really for future budgets or the next budget year. Right. So our $6,600 goes to the town, and then that $2.4 million is just extra that goes to the rainy day fund. Right, right. Okay. I just wanted to explain. Yep. No, nope, that's okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you for the civics class. <laughs> <laughs> Just see a lot of students. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, any additional questions for Jessica? All right. No, thank you very much, Jessica. Thank you. Very good. Appreciate it. And our you. contact information is on the last page. Um, Ron was the partner on the engagement. He couldn't be here tonight. But if you have any questions afterwards, feel free to email us. Or when you're looking through this great piece of work, <laughs> <laughs> reach out to us. You can. We'll do. <laughs> thank you. We'll do. I'll expect confirmation up from all board members on that in, within a week. That's my email first thing. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, next item on the agenda, 5C, Engage Learning Update. So just in the spirit of a civics lesson, uh, <laughs> this is Board of Education Appreciation Month. Our Hallmark card. Our board. So I, oh I think. Um, For the whole month, we get a month. I know, you get I a whole month <laughs> just uh, to celebrate your service uh, to the Farmington community. Um, a nice way to celebrate that service was yesterday's game. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, and I, th I thought the introduction from the Union School uh, Specialist, mm -hmm. another great celebration because that was something that this board brought forward so that we're giving support to our teachers so they're continuously learning and growing as uh, educators and they also provide interventions for our students. So lots of uh, celebrations and that's all because of your work and your support of our students and our faculty. Um, I know that this is by no means uh, equal to what you give, but we thought we would uh, celebrate the board with some treats. We had a lot of great feedback during the budget when we s provided some <laughs> nice treats on Saturday, so we thought, let's do that again mm -hmm. for, for board appreciation. But I sincerely want to thank all board members. You give countless hours uh, to our school district, uh, making what uh, and really um, nationally school a nationally recognized school district because of all the work that you do, whether it's budgetary, whether it's making decisions during the year of uh, improvements that we're going to make. So I just want, on behalf of uh, the entire school district, want to thank our Board of Education. So um, thank you. Oh, and I, I'll just think we can't do it without you, Kathy, and Kim, and your title administrative staff. You know, we don't do this alone. We do it in conjunction and collaboration with you. So it's a truly team effort. And so thank you for everything you do for us. Thank you. you make our jobs easier. Trust me. Thank you. Um, so I do, with the audit, I do want to just thank Vince and his team. I, that's a lot of work that goes into not only uh, all of us establishing the budget and going through that. We're going to have a, a discussion about next year's budget during this meeting. Uh, but the audit process is a rigorous process. And so I just want to thank Vince and his team. Thank you. Uh, Engage Learning Update. Uh, we have lots of really exciting news to share. Um, we had 67 students at FHS qualify for the All-Conference uh, Musicianship Award. Uh, FHS had the largest number of students qualify for orchestra, band, and choir in the conference competition. Uh, we also have a finalist for National Merit Scholarship Program. That was out of 16,000 semifinalists. Um, IAR, this is a new uh, program at IAR, and Scott Hurwitz uh, and Nilda Irizarry, our administrative team, along with uh, Carrie Vassone, had uh, developed a preschool um, buddies program, and um, our seventh and eighth graders uh, participate in the program and visit our preschool at IAR, and they're, they have um, assigned buddies. I happened to be at the game with Scott's son, Jack, who's in the preschool, and he saw his buddy in the, <laughs> uh, in the fan group and was so excited and had to go up to him and say hello. So it's just a wonderful program that started this year. There's also highlights from the geography bee at Westwoods. A sixth grader won our uh, Westwoods level competition, will compete in the national competition. Second graders at Noah Wallace were treated to a puppet show put on by Miss Porter's about empathy and being kind. The lesson supported our reading and writer, writing unit on character study. At East Farm Student Council's inquiry group uh, engaged in a student proposed action research project 
about water in Ghana, and the project will make its way to government leaders in Ghana eventually. Uh, West District third graders celebrated their integrated unit on habitats and organisms with family members. Uh, Union School student mentors from FH, well, uh, student mentors from FHS laid, led a team building respect workshop at Union School. So lots of different um, highlights for the board and um, a celebration of what's going on in our school district. Thank you. Well, it's, it's always great. I mean, just the yeah. laundry list of accomplishments <laughs> every couple of weeks. It's 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 wonderful. Uh, yeah. Not only academically, but also with the with the buddy program. You know, they're yeah. doing things outside the classroom, which is wonderful achievements for our students. Um, any questions for Kathy? Okay. Uh, next item: Five D professional appointments, retirements, and resignations. One resignation yeah. for the end of this year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Next item uh, six six A unfinished business budget impact budget update. Uh, a couple a couple of um, things, and I know later in the agenda we're going to talk about um, the current um, um, budget things. It's an agenda item, the reduction in it in one area and addition items in the other area, and then um, uh, on this past Friday the second um, payment um, from the state for choice of choice revenue came in. Um, in, in total now the board has received uh, $603,707 so far on the choice tuition revenue. Um, the last payment usually comes in uh, May, um, so that's on track. Um, um, we are uh, continuing to have um, um, pressure areas on the budget. This current budget um, in um, special services, nursing, evals, in-town special ed transportation, and consultations. Um, those areas are still trending the way they have been trending um, and apply pressure on other on areas of the budget. Um, and um, we uh, definitely, and Tim, Tim is here, um, and um, I'd ask um, um, Tim to come up to the um, table too. Um, uh, are experiencing um, um, more issues, um, more deferred maintenance um, issues at um, Farmington High School, um, specifically um, uh, at the uh, certain roof sections. And um, these are very, uh, very critical um, uh, roof repair needs that we have been doing over the past um, year, um, and, but some um, serious needs that have to be addressed um, right now in three specific areas of um, Farmington High School roof. And um, I've talked with um, Superintendent Greeter about, um, you know, the, the importance of this. We all see the importance of it and the importance of doing these repairs right now. Um, and um, I did look into, um, um, uh, after Tim did some initial, est getting some estimates, where we could um, uh, find the funds to do um, um, some work up at the high school roof. Uh, I talked with Joe Swecky about an item. Uh, later on, on the agenda for the board, we're going to be, um, the board is <coughs> going to be looking at um, accepting as complete the section U and other letters that we did this past summer um, at the high school. And there'll be a, a good news story when we get to that point, too, because it came in under budget. And uh, we're going to, um, I'm going to give information about how there were dollars saved in the bonding, even in the bonding line for that. Um, school construction line, but there's there there are two st uh, still two areas within capital that I went and saw Joe Swatke about that um, to ask him um, if it was appropriate and he feels it is appropriate. So there's uh, uh, Joe and I have um, conferred on this and we feel that there's um, fifty seven thousand twenty five dollars left in um, cash um, uh, Farmington High School capital. Um, uh, areas that can be used for um, uh, these critical repairs. Um, and then in, in addition to that, because the cost is um, uh, uh, up to um, the areas Tim has <coughs> here, uh, the cost is up to um, $223,000. Um, I'm proposing that the other additional dollars to make up the difference could be taken out of um, choice revenue. Um, and, and we wouldn't spend we wouldn't, what we had identified and what we do identify each year uh, that we would spend in that area, typically we don't spend it um, until after January to see how our budget is trending. 
And since we're having these emergency issues at the high school with the roof, we would have to not spend the funding on what we had planned to spend it on and have to spend it on the emergency repairs to the roof. So just as this board knows, we've been having ongoing challenges with the roof at the high school. Um, and Tim uh, Harris, our director of facilities and his staff up at the high school, I can't say enough about them because they are always up there um, working on those areas and trying to be very proactive, but it's a, it's a real challenge for them. And um, so I, I do wanna thank Tim and his team for all of their efforts. Um, there are three specific areas that we have been doing repairs on. So it isn't as if we are just letting it happen. The minute there is a leak, we immediately send roofers up there. But there are three areas that even though we've been sending roofers up there, the, there are persistent leaks. So we feel that you know, we're at a point where we just have to do something more significant in those three areas. Um, and so Tim can provide you, you know, what sections of the high school, but we have a very, it's a very large section of uh, an, a roof that is at a, the end of its life expectancy um, when it comes to, um, you know, when it was originally installed. And so, um, but we also have the other uh, element of a potential building project. So we're trying, you know, to balance all of this and um, be as proactive as we can uh, when it comes to uh, these roof leaks. The time of year, if you remember, is this time of year exactly, because we have freezing and thawing and freezing and thawing. And so that's what creates, you know, water finds its way in spaces, it freezes, it expands, and then we, there's a pathway that is created into the school. Um, so that's part of our issue. We don't have this issue any other time of year. It just seems to be during this time of year. So, uh, Tim, would you give an sure. overview of the sections? <clears throat> yep, and just a little uh, refresher. Um, this section that I have outlined in yellow is the remaining sections of the, uh, of the flat built up, uh, asphalt built up roof, flat roof, uh, that was put on in 1992. Um, so it's, you know, obviously it's getting on 27 years old. This is an area of roof that, um, as you remember, has been on our radar for, you know, probably five years or so. Uh, we've been looking to replace this roof, but it was back when budgets were tight. We had to make choices, and there were other schools that had um, problems, you know, worse. And this wasn't leaking um, five years ago. Um, as a matter of fact, I have a rep our uh, roof report on our district from 2016 um, has these areas listed as fair condition. So here we are, um, we you know, uh, bought uh, some time. Um, we did the other roofs in the district, these farms, uh, uh, sections of Irving Robbins, um, West District, and um, deferred this roof uh, for, for future maintenance or replacement um, because they weren't leaking at the time. So. Um, uh, a piece of good news <laughs> is, uh, if you remember last year, I, we went up for the show and tell at the high school, and I showed you um, how a built-up roof is designed and how they work. And my idea was to put drains in this section because we had some severe ponding, which um, only you know feeds into the problem of the freeze thaw that Kathy was talking about. And you remember last year the, the severe problems we had in this area and this area uh, in, the, in the freeze thaw cycle. So those drains, I'm happy to say, um, worked, worked wonderfully. We had no issues in this area. We, we had all that water last year. So that's a real plus. Um, uh, these areas that I have hatched in red are areas that are just uh, critical. They're beyond repair. Um, they're, it's, it's not an area where that's conducive to adding drains, and drains really wouldn't help in this situation. Again, it's the uh, built-up roof, the top layer, it's probably three-eighths of an inch thick of, of uh, four laminates of uh, tar paper and tar and tar paper and tar, et cetera, until you get to the stone layer on top. It's just after so many years with uh, UV rays and just the heat and the cold, um, the uh, surface, uh, the asphalt cracks. And if you can imagine a dry stream bed or even a, a desert, you know, in Arizona, we have the ground just cracked. Um, it's a situation similar to that. So it's hard to find leaks. Folks think, 
go up, look for the hole, put tar in it, and be done with it. But it's, it's just, that's just not the case. Um, these areas are, are, are critical. This, this is the 700s. This area, uh, section B, um, is over the 700s. That's over in the math department. Um, so we have uh, 700 is here, uh, where this C is. That's the um, um, lecture hall, the tiered lecture hall. And then right next to it, we have the, uh, a health class. And uh, we have a couple health classes here. And then we get into math class. So these areas are leaking pretty uh, significantly. Um, it's, it is uh, good to note, though, that the, three, the freeze-thaw cycle is almost at its end. And we've seen a dramatic improvement in these areas, so much so that we're putting ceiling tiles back and the uh, uh, leaks are to a minimum. But don't think that means you know, we're out of the woods, because next it just won't support you know, anymore. Um, this is the admin area. And the uh, insulation under that, uh, the layer that I just described, the top layer, as you remember from last year's show and tell, the insulation is about this thick and it's, it's saturated with water. Um, and it uh, freezes, holds the water, it collects, and even on a nice, bright, sunny day, you can have water coming in. Um, so we have a problem here. And this area uh, here is the chorus room. And there's instruments stored there. Um, it has a sheetrock ceiling. It's not the best uh, place to um, uh, try to keep up the leaks. So the areas of, I, that I would say are, are beyond repair. Um, and I don't say that lightly. I um, um, <coughs> floated the idea of what they call a um, flood coat, where um, I did some research and on flat roofs, oftentimes to try to extend the life, they scrape the top layer of stone off and they flood the area with tar and then they replace the stone. But um, in all instances, when they describe flood coating, um, it's, a, it's important to remove any of the wet insulation, um, repair any leaks that are there currently, and then flood coat to extend the life. Well, points A and B are as the ship has sailed. Um, that insulation is wet. You would have to replace. So in an in a area like this, for instance, you'd be replacing almost three quarters of the insulation underneath which means you'd have to put a new built-up layer roof over the top, then flood coat that very new layer. So it really doesn't make much sense other than to replace, uh, replace those sections of roof. So no one's looking more forward to this renovation high school than I am. I always have to stand up in front of you and be the bearer of bad news. But um, I think it's just plain old uh, bad timing um, that these leaks appeared uh, within the last two years. Um, and it's just, um, you know, a situation that we're waiting to come to an end. But, um, folks, I really don't think we, we have much choice but to... Uh, and a, a rip and replace means to take this, uh, these roofs right up to the, to the steel deck and replace them with insulation and um, EPDM rubber to go over with rubber. Okay. Well, and, yeah, thank you, Tim. Oh, I mean, oh well, may I ask one other thing? Yeah, yeah. May I add one other thing? Um, I've had... Um, so I had a quote. Um, uh, from a contractor who we partner with uh, for these areas, and um, that Vince uh, mentioned earlier, two hundred and twenty uh, two thousand dollars and some change. Um, and just to vet that number, um, we had a um, uh, professional cost estimate done by uh, the architectural firm Jakunski and Humes, and um, uh, their cost estimate of twenty three dollars a foot aligns almost perfectly um, with the estimate that we got from Silktown. As a matter of fact, at $23 a square foot, came up to two twenty-five. dollars So they're, they're, the uh, a contractor was pretty much right on target, a little lower than um, the professional cost estimate that we, we see. <coughs> All right. Well, thank you, Tim. And I echo uh, Kathy's comments that thank you for you and your staff for everything you do up there in, in band-aiding the roof during these mm -hmm. difficult times. Just one quick question I have. So if we replace those red areas on that map, that's yep. a full replacement and it will survive through the renovation project at the high school if and when that yes. day comes. But oh, that's yeah. that's a full replacement on those. So we're on those red spots. Right. We're good. That's yep. okay. Yep. It's a full replacement. Yep. And, and uh, just, again, a, a, a brief, uh, let me add to the description of a full replacement, is ripping up that insulation and then adding, um, they, they, they ship, uh, the uh, roof plan out with the location of the drains and where they get the material. The engineers there design uh, tapered insulation. 
So that insulation, it comes in two by four sheets, that ISO, um, it's actually cut on a CNC machine and it's tapered to a quarter of an inch per foot. So it's all pieced together like a puzzle. So the guys come on the roof, it's bare, and they start laying these pieces out and it's like a Lego uh, thing. So when you're done, you have valleys that uh, pitch toward the drains that they were given the prints for. So it's, uh, everything is pitched, the rubber is laid on top, and um, yep, that's how it's done. Yeah. Christy? I just, I, if these, if these, um, you know, these specific spots, you're saying this has happened, you know, multiple times. Now, if they keep getting wet, that means that there's mold. So, I mean, are we testing right now to find out if there's mold in those areas of the school that the kids are in be while this is happening? I mean, are they breathing it in? It doesn't mean that there's mold. Well, um, well generally. Yeah, no, if, um, if you know, because we were on top of that. So um, there's drying that goes on. There's a whole process that Tim uses so that, you know, we are being very proactive with it. And, um, you know, we work regularly to ensure that um, you know whether it's testing or whatever we need to do that we we're are keeping on top that? of all of that. Because mm -hmm. if, it, if it keeps getting wet, then that's all mold needs is to get re-wet again. So I'm just want that. We, so we test for that. Right. So we work with uh, who? Who do we usually work with? Uh, TRC yeah. in Windsor. Yep, yeah. that's a testing group. Um, and like Kathy said, mold needs an organic material to thrive on, right. and it's inorganic what's here. But um, you know, something that gets wet may not smell great, but it doesn't necessarily mean that there's, okay. you know, mold and mildew there. And, yep, we have the testing in place. We test that, okay. Mm -hmm. Ellen? Um, Tim, can you shed some light on the situation up at the high school? So do we have classrooms that are usable, not, not usable, usable some days? Mm -hmm. Are we holding our breath during rainstorms or yep. just like different ways what's happening up there that could be disrupting education? It's something that it, it makes it easier to talk about in the community other than the right. price of doing nothing. Sure. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yes, I can describe uh, the situation. Um, you could have in, let, I would say that um, there's probably three um, classrooms or four classrooms where you may see a bucket, you know, on the floor and a ceiling tile removed um, and water drips into the bucket. Um, and this, um, let's see, it was last week uh, for two days in room 702, uh, we felt that um, the leaking was such, it was a um, um, health ed class, uh, that we asked the teacher to find an adjacent room uh, for that day, So uh, for those two days. So those two days we thought, this doesn't, this isn't conducive to, it was disruptive to the class. So um, yes, there was two days this year that we moved the class. Now, fortunately it was a health class, it was a small class. They go to the gym, they go to the weight room. They don't, you know, it's, it's a very easy class to move. So um, yes, that did happen um, this year. Yep, that's correct. And, and I should also just add that we implement tools for schools in Farmington in all of our schools. And it is a indoor air quality management type of system that we all use. So we at each school, there is a tools for school team. And um, they, you know, regularly are inspecting the schools for any water, stains, anything that they might see, because the more proactive you are with that and the faster that you address it, um, then you're not going to have, you know, any persistent issues um, like you were talking about. Um, so that's something that Tim and his team, as well as teachers and administrators, all participate in. Um, and I can speak to it only because when I was a principal, I was the first principal in, I think, Connecticut uh, trained in tools for schools. And um, it really is about not only uh, looking, you know, to proactively address any water infiltration in a school, but it's also about like classrooms that are too warm, classrooms that are too cold, like managing the, you know, the comfort of individuals in the building, and um, so it's all it's just about the indoor um, air environment, the indoor environment as a whole, making sure that it's it's healthy, it's not um, a situation where. Uh, individuals with allergies are, you know what I mean, having issues. So it's something that we take very seriously in Farmington and we've participated in that mm -hmm. program as long as I've been here. Yeah. I don't know 
when it started, but um, it's, an, it's an excellent program. I never heard of it. So, Tim, I appreciate all of your work on this, and I'm going to throw out a disclaimer. I am not a roofer, so the questions I'm going to ask <laughs> you had is full not correct me. Yes. Um, so you've described the sections that you worked on last year where you added those additional drains, yes. and that was very successful. Mm -hmm. Did you give any thought when you were kind of mapping this out to increasing the drains in these <coughs> sections, kind of preparing for the future? And I know that new material you're using is, is supposed to have a longer life and things like this, but right. just looking ahead, is there any wisdom to us looking to increase the number of drains looking yep. out to the future? Yep. Well, as a matter of fact, um, I did uh, earlier this year, right at the uh, start of school, I added a drain um, in this section because the ponding was so severe from the insulation being that it was, there was water probably two and a half inches uh, deep mm -hmm. here. I added a drain um, and we cleverly uh, drained it uh, right, you know, directly outside, put a, a pipe down, um, you know, on, on the outside of the building, and uh, but to no avail. That area was just so compromised. What I'm talking about is with the new roof that you're with, designing. Are you, are you talking, thinking about adding additional drains oh. in, into that to make it, um, looking out to the future for those drains yep actually um there's adequate there's adequate drains there now Got it. Um, actually yeah and the reason um that we're confident that those will work is because the uh the roofs before had no pitch <laughs> they didn't design and then uh the state wisely asked for a quarter of an inch per foot um so those roofs were literally flat um, and because of that uh, uh, insulation compressing, mm -hmm. there are some areas where the, there, there's water around a drain. It's Just not even, you, you can't even get to the drain. Yep, exactly. Mm, so, thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm also okay. Do you know this? So, I just I have a couple questions for Tim and then a question for you. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm trying to figure out what order to go in. <laughs> I might get increasingly upset. So, let. <laughs> So Tim, I, I, you do such a good job. I normally agree with everything you say, but you said something that I'm going to have to disagree with. You said that you think it's just bad timing. Mm -hmm. So these roofs that we're talking about in these sections, what year were they put on? 92. So I just have to disagree that it's bad timing. I think it's just end of life timing. Mm -hmm. I think this is expected timing. Yes. It's not bad timing. Mm -hmm we expected this. I mean, they're actually longer than we expected timing. Isn't, isn't it longer than we expected timing? Yes. Right. Uh, yep. so. <laughs> yeah. No, I, what I meant by bad yeah. timing was the, um, uh, the budget that we were receiving from the town. Right. Well, uh, when we, you know, was, yep. right. So, I mean, also when you are fixing, like, so when people see water coming in, in the high school and mm -hmm. it's, you know, you see dripping water, it's not like fixing a drip in your house. Like if you have a drip in your house, you you know you put some caulk on it, or like you said, you could put a little rubber on it. Maybe it'll maybe it'll fix the leak. It's not like that. We're talking about a quarter of a million dollars. Mm -hmm. So this is a very expensive fix for a building that is pretty much at its end of its functional life. Right. All the all the way around this roof that we're putting on it, that now will have a 20-year life expectancy. The roof on an end-of-life building will have a 20-year life expectancy. Right. So that's not a smart financial decision mm -hmm. from all aspects. But you're saying that you have, you've weighed every option, and this is the only one we can make. Yes. Um, I spoke to both architects and um, our, the, the company that we partner with in roofing. And we've all stood up there countless times. And um, like I said, the last thing I brought up to them was the flood coat. And they huddled and thought that they agreed with everything that I read, um, that the insulation would have to be pulled up. Right. Um, so, the, so, so sometimes you just, you just got to do what you got to do, even though it's not the greatest financial decision. Right. Because you can't have water pouring in the mm -hmm. school, obviously. Yeah. That's not... That's a worse decision. Right. We, got it. we have to protect the students. We mm -hmm. have to let them, ha we can't disrupt their day. Right. So my question to you, Kathy, then, is um, this quarter of a million dollars, what would we have spent it on? What, what, what are we not getting? So um, as you may remember that there is a um, <coughs> area of the open choice uh, money that we re 
that we receive that we purchase uh, furniture from. And some years where we can achieve purchasing furniture because we have a budget that um, we're not having a lot of surprises with. Right. There have been years where we have had surprises in self-insurance, health insurance, um, or in special services that are you know, mandated. Um, and you, you don't know from one, you, you make your best estimate given the students that we have now for the next year and sometimes new students move in and um, sometimes uh, needs are more significant in the next year for current students. So sometimes special services uh, is over budgeted and we do go to this particular area. So this is not the first time that we've not purchased the furniture we were expecting to purchase and instead dealt with an unanticipated issue. Um, and so it, it would be the furniture portion of our open choice grant that we typically purchase furniture in. Now I will say that we will monitor, it's very, you know, we still have several months left in our budget. And if there were areas within our budget that are for facility improvements that we don't expend, I probably would go into some of that operating money and use that funding to support the, the um, uh, cost of the roof. But right now, because I'm not t it, at the, towards the end of the fiscal year, I would say I want to be clear that there are funds to cover this. Um, and it would be an open choice uh, funding. And we just wouldn't do the purchasing of the furniture that we anticipated. Well, and that's what, so, and that is why you wait until the end of the year. And that's why you use that money um, for those purposes. I mean, there are districts, I think you will talk about this every year, there are districts that fund programming with that money. Um, and that's a risky proposition. We've never done it like it's, that. It's here. risky yeah. because you, you're not guaranteed. Right. You're not um, guaranteed you know, their uh, open choice um, tuition funding uh, depends on how many open choice right. students you have. And we don't want to lock our, our town, our school district right. into, you know, specific, um, uh, you know, percentages. We want to have flexibility in Farmington. So uh, we've made, and I think this has been a very wise decision on the board's part, um, to uh, per, you know, use one-time purchasing of furniture in that particular area so that um, if our budget isn't trending well or if we have an unanticipated emergency, we have flexibility. I think we all do that as in our own <laughs> finances and we want to do you know make wise decisions uh with the taxpayers money and so we have always done this i would say that i don't typically use uh utilize this money until after january when i have a good sense and all of us have a good sense of how our budget is trending so we do wait until that time um, because we feel that you know around this time of year we know mm -hmm. where things are going and how we're going to end at the end of the year we were uh, given our budget, we were planning to buy furniture at the end of the year. We're, if, if we were to go forward with this, which I think is an emergency and a, a need uh, that needs to be addressed uh, right away, uh, you know, we, we won't have that flexibility to do that. But I think it's important that we do this. Okay. Okay. Thank, um, thank you, Tim, thank you, Tim. Yeah. very much. I mean, it's uh, always appreciated. Again, thank you, okay. your, your staff, too, for yeah. all their efforts. Can Tim maybe put that, that drawing up on our website? Or What's that? They put that drawing up on the website so, so people can see what, what parts of the movie's talking about? Sure. Yeah, we can do that. Thank you, Tim. We can put it part of the minutes, right? Yeah, yeah, make yeah, it part yeah. of the minutes. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. It's cool. Vince? That's, that's it that I have right there, but I'm going to... I'm on the next items. Too, yeah. So. Okay. <laughs> so, stay in the hot seat, right? <laughs> okay. The Tim, next. Tim's going to stay too because yeah. the last one is actually closing out the roof project. Okay. So we. Can be on okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. So next item on the budget, um, item seven, new business seven A approval of the 2019-2020 budget and any actions associated with approval. Um, so I guess, can I have a motion to approve the Farmington Board of Education uh, recommends 
well, the Farmington Board of Education recommends that the Farmington Town Council re revised 2019-2020 budget of $67,708,605 that reflects a total increase of $1,908,708 or a 2.90% over the 2018-2019 Board of Education budget. Motion. Second. Okay. Now we'll open it up. I just want to thank everybody to start the comments for uh, you know supporting uh, Kathy and the administration in, in getting the budget. We were uh, subject to s some level of scrutiny this year um, and very responsive, Kathy, to uh, the town council. And I hope that that's reflected. Um, you know, I know we t the targets that we've talked about that um, and the reduction to the budget was significantly less than what we anticipated. So I appreciate your efforts in being responsive to the town council and, and working in conjunction with the town council, as I try to say, as partners. So mm -hmm. at that point in time, I'll just open it up. Um, Kathy, you can. Okay, so um, Vince is going to, ha will hand out a document that will go over uh, the $77,000 reduction we received in our operating budget on Saturday from the town council. Um, and uh, again, I just you know thank the board for all of your work on this budget. Uh, we, as I said on Saturday to the town council with a seventy-seven thousand uh, dollar reduction, we would keep this at a tier one, a level one reduction, which would be the least significant impact. If you've been on the board uh, for some time, we have level one, level two, and level three, uh, with level three being the most significant and typically impacting <coughs> students. So with a $77,000 decrease, we're going to keep it at a tier one a level reduction, least significant impact. So I'll just go through the list um, for you. The first would be a reduction to our self-insurance reserve. And if you remember, we have a joint policy with the town council that we should keep our reserve at a certain percentage. And we are above that percentage quite a bit. But we also are uh, experiencing some, um, you know, concerning uh, trends in claims. And that's why you see a more significant increase in our 2019-2020 uh, budget when it comes to insurance increase. Um, but we do feel that we could, um, and I've actually uh, shared this with the town council when they asked me, where would the reductions come from? Um, and I think that was on Wednesday. They were asking about if it went to the upper end of the target that they set. And one of the things I did share with them, which would be a least significant impact, would be a 40,000, well, I didn't give the, no, the amount, but uh, on your sheet, it's a $40,000 decrease in the reserve. Um, so that's the first level. Um, then uh, you can, if you're going to ask questions about the following ones, I would need some help from Tim or from Vince. Uh, the next is not up to date on the sewers. Not up to date on the sewers <laughs> as much as I would like to be. Tim, Tim uh, can talk about it. <laughs> 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 um, so there's a five thousand seven hundred and fifty dollar decrease uh, to sewers, and this is based on further discussion with Tim. Um, so we really looked line by line trying to find these um, so that there wouldn't be an impact on students. On life insurance, a $1,492 decrease, and that's based on new information on the projected cost for life insurance. On occupational therapy, $5,000, and we would just apply um, projected Medicaid funds uh, to that account. We already apply Medicaid funds, but we would apply additional Medicaid funds. Uh, in in service training, uh, we would uh, decrease that by 2,358,000 and just over lowering the overall increase, but not having a significant impact on what uh, in-service we provide to teachers. Two, Just two, trimming that. $2,358. Oh, sorry, did I not say that? Okay, sorry. <laughs> um, in building repair uh, contracts, $2,000, and that would be additional efficiency and video surveillance contract. And electricity, $14,000, and that's just analyzing current trend data to realize savings. Workers' compensation, $6,400, lowering the projected premium increase amount for a total of $77,000 in reduction. Okay, open it up uh, for questions, comments, discussion. It's great. I mean, it's, it's, you're looking at, well, question for you on the self-insurance. Even though we're, we're, we're a little less than what we originally budgeted for, 
the town usually talks about holding us harmless if there's an issue where we depart from, you know, if we have a catastrophic year where they will help us out. Mm -hmm. and, and if we're short or having some deficiencies, whatever, mm -hmm. that is still understood to be true, I, I take it. Yes, yes. I would say that we have quite, you know, a large increase in uh, health insurance, right. but this has to do with the reserve level. Oh. And the reserve level is um, quite h much higher than what um, we are required okay. to have. And, but the reason why we did not, you know, significantly reduce that uh, area was working with Joe Swetke and also looking at our trends and thinking that there's a possibility even in this year that we might have to go into that reserve, but the reserve is very healthy. Okay. So I'm All not, right. you know, I mean, so at this point, it, I don't, I wouldn't uh, recommend this, it, it, you know, if I thought, wow, we're really cutting this uh, so close. So that's, Okay. The thinking oh, behind it. So we're within our joint policy. I just want to, you know, make sure that everyone knows this isn't going below that policy level. Mm -hmm. So after that, after the electricity savings and the workers' compensation adjustments, you're not looking at a lot of money really coming out of the budget. Right. Right. We we tried to it's accomplish that. That's excellent. Mm -hmm. Excellent. You did a great job responding to the council. No mm -hmm. question about it. So one more quick question on the self-insurance. Mm -hmm. Does this number, is it, so the reserve numbers are based off of um, projected expected claims, correct, for, for a calendar year. So is this taking into account the increase for the 2019-2020 renewal, or is this based off of last year's expected? This would be based off of last year's expected and okay. our, our current. Um, so knowing that we're trending in the wrong direction. It's still, it's it still, is, it definitely, okay. it is. It is, okay. and you are pointing out something, young Christine, that we are not the a claim pick trend. is going to be higher. Right. Yeah, going yeah. into next year. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But it is a very healthy reserve. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, Liz. I just have more of a comment. I guess. I mean, I think you did an excellent job responding to the council, but my, I guess, my comment is more that I thought that you did come in with a very. Um, responsible and uh, very conservative budget to begin with and I think that that was what we approved and I think when you do um, budget fund accounting and budgeting uh, it's hard when you have you're doing it from a moment in time mm -hmm. and you don't know it's hard to anticipate what your different um, accounts are going to be a year from now or what's going to happen. Uh, tonight's a perfect example of that. You don't know how things are going to project out into the future. So, um, you know, w you do your best job to anticipate um, what is going to happen, but trends um, could go a totally different way. So for the town council to cut the budget that was presented to them and to do so in such a very um, sort of small way um, seemed, um, I, I thought, uh, I, I just didn't, I didn't think that it was very uh, effective and I, I do think you've responded to it and I think you've responded to it very well, but it was disappointing to me the way that it was done and it was disappointing to me that they did it at all, quite frankly, on the operating side. Um, I think that it was best left to the voters of Farmington to decide if they thought, if the voters thought that it was a responsible budget. So it's more of a comment, but I do think you responded to it very well. Okay. Thank you. Any additional comments? The okay. only thing, well, yeah, we no, could do the, I, I don't know, did you want to go over capital too, just to keep yes, the board in? Yep, and yep. Mm -hmm. yep. I've got a complete other separate handout. Not that this is exactly having to do with our operating motion, but I think just yeah. in its totality, you should yeah. know yeah. what changes were made to capital. Mm -hmm. You're only voting on the operating, but we just want to keep you in the loop on on the capital as well. I ran out of regular pages, so it's a print. It helps with eyes over 50, so don't worry about it. It doesn't look like the print is small. No, no. It doesn't. The print is small. It's smaller. It would, have, it would have printed out on, like, multiple pages. It just wouldn't have the same um, effect. Uh, um. Maybe I'll just start uh, the com my comments by saying that... Um, the the um, uh, the town council revised 
column so that would be the column all the way to the right um, that uh, has has a new total so the, the Board of Education um, uh, requested amount was um, two million uh, um, eight hundred and two thousand the Town Council um, revised is um, three million um, three hundred and seventeen thousand um, dollars so that's the that's where uh, it's landed and uh, the changes, um, uh, I'll point out, I guess the uh, most, most um, uh, direct change for like Tim and myself for how we're thinking about projects um, is the, the $300,000 for West District Corridor Flooring, which was in the structural architectural um, bucket, um, has been cut. Um, for Tim and I, it's been pushed out a year. Um, so that $300,000 number is, is not there. <coughs> for Matt Ross and myself, um, uh, the technology infrastructure um, bucket, ha that has been cut by $20,000. And so that $20,000 worth of a project, Matt has pushed that out a year. So those two, those are the two items that have been um, um, pushed out, cut from the budget, however you'd like to look at that. And. Um, for purposes of cash and bonding, um, there's a, the council is bonding a, a single question, and it's there's a sub at the at the um, bottom um, left. There's a subgrouping of the items that are 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 the bonded items. But I want to really point out to the board um, a very important fact that Joe Swecky outlined to me when I went and talked with him today. It's the, um, the East Farms Office Relocation um, um, bond number that the board sees um, there um, is, a, is a line, if you will. Uh, the um, uh, Union School Elevator, the Westwoods Dehumidification Design, the IAR Heating, Air Conditioning, and Noah Wallace Library and AC. Um, that's actually, a, 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 I broke them out so the board could see because it was in earlier information I had given the board too. But um, uh, it's really, now you need to go back into the right-hand column, and you will find that the council split apart the district-wide mechanical equipment and plumbing, or the MEP bucket. They now have a cash bucket and a bond bucket. So you have 75000 which was the deferred maintenance um, mm. earmark that Tim and I had in MEP, left in the cash. And you have five hundred and twenty-seven thousand um, dollars in the uh, this bond question. Um, so I just wanted to point that out. And it's it's so it's not that uh, that is that is a um, a bond, but it's a it is a bucket. It's not line items um, that are going to be in this question. Um, so, um, and uh, uh, I guess that the only other point out the East Farms project um, uh, they did. Uh, uh, leave a East Farms office relocation cash amount of 202000 and then they um, put the bond amount of uh, $1,463,000. Uh, 1, All the other areas the board's um, capital requested <coughs> remain the same. Any questions for Vince on that? Any further questions on the uh, proposed reductions in the operating budget motion as uh, that's on the table? Okay, then uh, all in favor of the motion on the table as to the operating budget? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Approved. Next item on the agenda 7B review of revised regulation 4001.3A criminal history record information. First reading. So this is um, aligning our this policy. We, we typically use Shipman and Goodwin, as you know, for our model policies, but uh, we are using the state level model policy. This is something that's been recommended uh, to us, so we wanted to align it uh, to the state level policy. What's the policy intended to address specifically? Just our management and Vince, you could probably give more information, but as we get criminal history records on individuals, it's you know how we manage that. And yeah, Ann yeah. Jay is our um, uh, administrator of um, of the materials, any fingerprinting materials, record keeping mm -hmm. about that. Mm -hmm. um, 
Mary Pagnini also has important um, um, responsibilities at Town Hall because of background check um, mm -hmm. things. And um, there have been a lot of new um, uh, uh, protections about um, data. Okay. Um, Matt has been very involved in the discussions with, um, after Ann has gone to the state trainings with the state police and FBI folks, she's come back and then spent lots of time with Matt. Um, and uh, we need to have our policy in order. We need okay. to have certain procedures in the main office um, in order. Okay, thank you. Chris? Yes, I, I, I just had a question because when I was reading through it, it's on page three in the media sanitation and disposal. You mentioned Shred It as the company, and do you normally put the company or the business that's providing it in your policy, if that could possibly change? The vendor, the vendor being specific. The vendor, right yeah, the vendor being specific. Hmm. Usually we don't. But so that's why I was just, yeah, I, usually it we stood don't, out when I was reading it because normally we there, don't have a vendor in there. I would have to defer to Vince. Are they our current that. vendor? Yeah, is I that don't, our current I don't vendor? think we, uh, Shredda is our current yeah. vendor. That's correct. Um, and um, I'm trying to think of other policies. Do we have, um, right? I, I would agree with you. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. Changing. I don't know if we, um, that word to vendor. That's a yeah. Vendor. yeah. Nice catch. Shredding vendor or something. Yeah. yeah. Good point. It might have been that it was like left a blank and mm -hmm. yeah. we actually put in the yeah. vendor, but I agree, I totally agree that we yeah. typically don't do that, yeah. so we have flexibility. We don't want to have to come back to you yeah. before yeah. we yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. We've got a new shredding vendor. Yeah, <laughs> so we will fix that for the second reading. Motion? Yep. Motion to approve the first reading of uh, revised regulation 4001.3A. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Okay. Next item, uh, 7C, approve as, in, as complete and accept the school building project as presented. Can I have a motion that the Board of Education approves as complete and accepts the school building project here and identified for public school purposes? Motion. Second. Okay. Tim? Um, and, and this is a um, uh, function of the um, Board of Education because the Board of Education is the school building committee for this project. And um, uh, this would be the, one of the last things that I need um, when filing for the State of Connecticut's um, reimbursement for the project because we did get um, the approvals for to put in for reimbursement. Um, but I'll just let Tim say about the, it concluded. Right. Yeah, it concluded the uh, capital project um, that we um, did this summer. And um, I showed you before the areas outlined in yellow from 1992. Um, I excluded because we finished them last summer, sections uh, U, O, Q, and R, um, which were completed, and they were completed under budget. And... Um, um I had referred to it earlier when I was talking about um, the capital funding that is still going to be in place for the new roof projects um, that we're going to be doing. But um, the um, bond funding that was in place is found on that big sheet of paper um, that I handed out. Um, but the, the project that, um, that I'm putting in to close out is ended $159,438. So there was a material savings um, in the bidding process. There was also some um, um, change orders that were good change orders that resulted in savings at the end. Um, so, um, so the uh, uh, possible um, reimbursement to the town, um, the eligible aspect of um, the 159,000 is 140,838. And um, uh, so if you get 30% of that back after the project is audited, there's the potential to get back from the grant $42,251. Um, so. And just so we are clear, the roof projects we talked about earlier, it's not totally funded through Open Choice. There, there are um, there, the 55000 and is it the $2,025? Correct. Uh, those two areas on the larger sheet that um, we will also use towards that, which we've talked to Joe Swecky about. All right, well, um, 
let the record reflect, we never want to stand in your way for state reimbursement, Vince. So all in favor of the motion. I <laughs> 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 oppose. Abstentions. It's approved. Um, we get you more. Uh, next item on the agenda, uh, a report of the board chair, no report. And next item, adjournment. Can I have a motion to adjourn? Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? We're adjourned. Mm -hmm.